Well, let's go ahead and do our intro since we've already started this party started. As you guys saw, we just got the dump truck up here successfully. Woo! -hoo. So, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome to our channel. Today, we are going to be starting the final, what we hope to be the final work project for this dump truck. It is a, what year is it? 1960 something F, I think 600 Ford dump truck. So tell them what we're gonna do today. We are going to do a complete redo of the wiring. Okay. Replacement gonna, of the wiring. It's gonna take more than today then, just so you know. To kickstart this project, I have a notebook. I'm going to try and label original wire colors to all of the accessories and things we need to keep. And then we are going to literally rip the old wiring out of this truck. The kit we have is a complete wiring kit. It has all the wires needed. So we are not worried about salvaging any of the old stuff. However, I wanna make sure I retain a little bit of color information so I can match them up or at least look it up in the future when we get to the point of reconnecting things. Before we jump into tearing this thing apart, let's go ahead and take a look at our wiring kit and tell you guys a little bit about that. The wiring kit we're gonna use is from Painless Performance. They seem to be like a huge part in old restoration vehicles. And so Sam reached out to them and said, hey, you wanna partner with us for this video we're gonna to do to redo our dump truck that needs a total rewire. They were up for it. So thank you Painless Performance and stay tuned as we get to work putting this in. All right, let's go ahead and show you guys what's in this box. This is their classic customizable chassis harness TN-21 circuits part number 10102 this is what they had for this truck they did not have a specific one for this model and body style truck which was totally understandable but painless performance is known for you give them the year make a model of your vehicle and they give you a complete custom ready to go kit so very cool in this particular kit you get all sorts of cool things when others say they include an instruction book, they're not talking about what Painless is talking about. This is a book. It is 120 plus pages of everything you ever wanted to know about everything electrical in a vehicle. And probably if it's a vehicle specific kit, it's gonna be vehicle specific for what you're working on. This is really cool. It's awesome they give you this giant book and this is by far the reference manual for your project. They also tell you before you begin, read your owner's manual. Inside the box here, we have a lot of harnesses and zip ties and flasher relays and all sorts like that. Comes with some wire terminals and crimp connections. It comes with a bumper sticker. Oh yeah, that's going on the minivan, hun. And it comes with a little bit of promotional, uh, you might want to upgrade stuff, showing their wire loom or braiding connections. That's pretty cool. Neat little product placement. We have some more terminal connections. This looks like possibly the alternator. That's cool. And sort of last but not least is the actual wire bundle itself you've got the fuse block you've got some relays here places for your flashers and then all of the wire here the really cool thing about this wire is each individual one is labeled for what it is so if I just pick one out let's say this little brown one it says it's headlight section a two headlights low beam it tells you exactly what it is and that is stamped the whole length of the wire so that's really cool after that, there's a mounting bracket for the fuse block and then some dielectric grease, which is the stuff you keep from having your electrical terminals kind of corrode and stuff in the weather. So, oh yeah, and then some really thick gauge wire, probably for the alternator. So this is the heart of the bundle. This is the wire kit itself. We're going to start by mounting the fuse block in a good location, and then we'll start wiring this thing up. little knot here. Angela 
Angela and I have been reading through this book a little bit and we have the pretty much order of operation for what we're doing here in the dump truck. We are going to remove all of the original wiring as best we can and as intact as possible. Go ahead and get it all out and set outside for now. Then we will go ahead and run the new wires where they need to go. They are very organized in how they're bundled together depending on what section of the vehicle they go to. So we'll be running the wires for the engine and headlights up to the engine and headlights, things for the instrument cluster over there, and so forth and so on. So pretty straightforward. It is very complicated and very in-depth as far as you have a lot of connections and a lot of things and a lot of stuff to do but the actual wiring and running of the wires is not too terrible. You just want to make sure you take your time doing it and, you know, take Don't your... cut anything. Yeah, yeah, don't cut anything yet. No pre-terminating. We're just taking out old wires and running new ones to where they roughly go. So do we need to... Just like with demolition in the house, Angela likes to do that. Apparently she likes to do it in here too in the dump truck. I'm trying to help. But she's just like gung-ho going at it, and I'm just trying to film what I can. So, okie dokie. Angela is taking the wire out, and uh, I guess that probably means it'll leave me putting the wires in, but we'll see. As long as I don't have to know exactly what I'm doing, I can take it apart. <laughs> <laughs> Let somebody else clean up that mess. <laughs> it works. She's almost got it done, though. I think she has to unhook the wiper motor and a couple more things, and then take the entire harness out all at once. So pretty cool i mean obviously with it being an old truck it's not going to have a lot of electronics so that's going to make this job so much easier than any other kind of modern vehicle but yeah so far not too bad all right this is to the wiper motor all by its little lonesome and here is the entirety of the i guess ignition or it's the wire harness dash harness yeah. So, you can go ahead and pull it out, hon. Let me put my Gatorade up. Here. <laughs> I see. You I sit down on the job, huh? I really am. I'm just taking it back. All right. You can definitely tell where people tinkered with the wiring was over there. Because this is nice and uniform, and now I'm getting into jumbled messes of electrical tape, chewing gum, who knows. It's a Medusa. The rat's nest. old versus new. <laughs> I, I'll mess with this new stuff much better. All right, we are going to run the wire section for the engine slash headlights through the firewall here on the passenger side of the truck and into the engine bay. So that's how we're gonna run that way. That's where the original wires for most of the engine components although not light components, we're running. So we're just gonna reuse the hole, but adding in a grommet so they don't get frayed and chewed up. I think all in all that probably took us about 10 minutes or so, but I mean, it went really good. Although I don't see how you could do this by yourself. I was inside feeding Angel the various wires, calling out colors. She would grab them from the grommet that we put in the firewall there, pull them through, wait, not fish more, pull and wait, because not all these wires are the same length. And so that's, um, I don't know, if you're by yourself, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. It's gonna be a lot of back and forth probably. Either way, it's nice to have the engine headlight section of the wires here. This is not all the wires that go up here in the engine section, but it's the first bundle of a couple. Here inside the truck, you'll be able to see the fuse box and everything and how the wires turn and go right through that grommet. Looks pretty good so far. I mean, it's, you know, just running wires for right now, 
but it is not too bad so far. I don't know how else I can say that. Next thing we're going to do is take the remaining wires here and run it from the fuse box, which is in the passenger side, over to the driver's side of the truck. Some are going to stay there for the instrument cluster and switches and controls. The others are going to pass through the firewall and then split, whether they go to the tail section, additional things of the engine, and stuff like that. That looks like how the original wires are gone, so we're just kind of following suit. So we'll feed these bundles across the inside of the dash here and over to the driver's side. All right, we have moved to the next part of this project and that is up here under the hood. First thing you do is start wiring up your headlights. We have the wire loom coming out of the firewall and over the back of the motor or engine for now. We will make that prettier in the future. We're just kind of loosely attaching the zip ties to kind of hang it in rough location for now. The wire harness comes with long and short links for your headlights. So we've split those off as needed and we're getting ready to terminate it with the included plugs for the headlights. So that's awesome. You get new plugs for your headlights and everything you need. So we're getting ready to attach that and be one step closer to being done. So it's been a lot of reading and figuring out. We're doing the alternator hookup right now, which I think there is like 20 pages in the manual devoted to different types of alternators depending on your vehicle. So you just gotta kinda find which one works and go with it from there. Um, we will show you once it's all hooked up, but otherwise we're just figuring it out and putting it together best we can. This is not easy to get to. All right, so we are in day three. We finished up yesterday getting the alternator hooked up the rest of the way. We still have yet to clean up some of the wires, but we will get to that. And so now we are in the interior of the car, cab, truck, whatever. And Sam is working on the headlight switches right now, like the high beam, low beam switch. That's actually a foot pedal. I never knew that they had that sort of thing till now. So that's pretty cool. And we're gonna have to splice some wires together because they are a little short since we put the all the wire harness fuse, fuse box. box on the right side passenger side so we got that going on it is looking a little hairy in here because there are so many wires that come out for inside so we will give you some views on that soon Here's the ignition switch, it's the original. I've combined two wires into one just so they fit better with the spade connectors and everything. But like Angela said, this is actually it's pretty easy. Um, if anything, it's, it's kind of boring because I'm just doing splice and connect, splice and connect. But I guess it's better for it to be boring than to just be totally lost on what to do. The turn signal, hazard switch, horn button, assembly in this steering column, that was a lot of fun. So that's what these wires are. I went ahead and put some barrel connectors on those wires so that if by chance we got them wrong, it's easy to unplug and plug correctly where we need to go. Just because this one switch does right, left turn signals, front and rear. It also does the hazards and it does the horn. So there's a lot of stuff going on in one area. So as you can see, we also have the steering wheel taken off for that. 
otherwise you wouldn't be able to get to the switches inside there that's pretty much it it's just a lot of clamping crimping plugging and going to the next step all right we just reached the point where i'm like you know what i want to see if this thing starts up because finishing the ignition switch should be everything this truck needs to run so i have the battery connected it's in neutral it's also chalked with blocks so we're safe on that front I'm going to put the key in the switch here and let's see if it turns over and or starts. <laughs> That's it, we can take it for a drive. <laughs> it starts really quick too, that's nice. Welcome back to day number 3000 on this project. I have phoned a friend, this is Angel's brother Austin. He is a certified old truckologist. He just helped us pull the headlight switch out. He taught me some stuff about old switches and how you get them out of the dash. So we're working on wiring up the headlight switch next and doing some other things that kind of got me stumped like instrument cluster diagnosing and stuff like that. So when we get settled, I'll put him on the spot on camera and he can show you some tricks that he's taught me as far as testing your dials and stuff. So Austin helped me figure out the headlight switch just a few extra wires we're not going to need so far, which he tells me is pretty normal, I guess. Uh, the new harness will simplify things. But headlights work, and what else works? Stuff works. Headlights, parking lights, but the parking lights in the front aren't hooked up, correct? Yeah, I've not hooked them up yet. So, um, Otherwise, he is currently going through the gauge cluster to figure out why the charging indicator doesn't work. The temp sensor and oil pressure sensor, we shorted over, and the dials work so the wires are good um so maybe those sensors are bad but that's where we are right now it's stuck on something yep there he is he doesn't have that right there that screws into the block we're at the point where i have all the wires separated and put in this plastic wire loom as much as i had on hand these are the ones that are going to go through the firewall down the engine bay and along the frame rail to power the tail lights, turn signals, and everything at the rear of the truck. One of the cool things about this truck is the fuel tank is right here behind the driver, which, I don't know, you might think that's cool and you may not, but the reason I say that is I did split off the wire for the fuel level gauge and poked it in with the original, so it's a little bit different. Otherwise, this is ready to go, so we'll fish this through the firewall, down and along the frame rail, and continue connecting things up. It looks like a complete rat's nest here, but it's because we still have everything out. We're checking everything, connecting everything to make sure it works. Once everything checks out, then we'll go through the whole process of tidying everything up. But we're not there just yet. All right, Angela has volunteered to climb under the truck, so I'm gonna give her the GoPro so she can show you guys what in the world's going on down there. Don't throw my leg to leg. Hi. I have just enough room that I can actually sit all the way up down here and take a look at everything. This is looking towards the front and right there is the new wire that I need to be pulling through. Here is some of the old, okay not that one, but here's some of the old wire that will pull out. Um, We'll have to check because some of it goes to the two-speed rear end that Sam has already redone. So it's a good chance to see everything down here. And it is very nice that it's this tall and you can sit up and not have to lay down and get all the junk falling all over your face. Oh, ha, ha. Real good horn. <laughs> Y'all have to try harder than that to make me jump. All right, starting it up. Oh no! <laughs> Stick your fingers in the fan belt. <laughs> you can tell that all the real work's there. happening here. You got dirty. Me and Chuck are in supervisor mode. We're just making sure they do a good job. Go find something to laugh about. Austin, what are you doing? Tell the camera what you're doing other than cutting all my wires out. <laughs> I'm cutting all your bad wiring out. Oh, okay. You you're putting good this. wire in. Can you reach out for me up? That means cut. The move. thing won't go through. Yes, man. I'll get it. Okay. Nope. Austin's coming. 
See, Austin's the tallest one of the group. That's why he's doing all the work. Got the long yeah. arms. What are you doing, DJing for us? Beatbox? You don't need any of this, do you? <laughs> there is a big honking wire. <laughs> There's a big honking wire? What's a big honking wire? We're getting technical over here. So we are running the wires from up here where my hand is. And that's what this is. There's a little clip right here that is holding it in place. And then sending it down to Austin. And he's running it through some of the holes down there that holds it in place as well. What are you doing? I'm uh, sitting down on the job in between radiator and engine block, so chilling. I'm working on zip tying these wires up to make them a little bit cleaner so we can come back with some wire loom and protective wrap. But otherwise, Found me a place that I fit, I can sit and do the job, so, yeah. We have made our way to the back of the truck here. Angel is down there cutting out all the old wiring and removing it. We're going to wire up the tail lights. This kit comes with wires for backup lights, left and right, a third brake light, which this truck doesn't have. However, I'm going to leave the wires back here and I'll just cap them. That way in the future, if anyone ever wants to put that stuff in place, it's already here, pre-wired labeled and ready to go otherwise for us it's just going to be wiring up the run lights or tail lights and then the left and right turn signals and that's about it they got it twisted around cut it out cut it out angela cut it out okay without cutting my fingers yeah don't cut your fingers we don't have extras there is something right here that i can run the wires through to help hold them up. I'm going to run it through that to keep it pulled up and off of everything else under here. Keep it pull, pulled up off of stuff. While Angel's working on that, I'll go ahead and show you guys the cab as far as everything's connected. <laughs> it's not put up yet, but all the wires are connected where they need to go. Any extra ones have these little wire nut clips uh, crimped onto the ends. So they are safe, but still here if anyone ever wants to use them in the future. Things such as air conditioning and electric cooling fan switches and radio, dome lights, all sorts of stuff like that. Things that we don't have or aren't wired up. I'm at least leaving the wiring here because the work's done and never know what somebody might want to put in here in the future. You might want to put a cool disco ball with some lights on it, a big old radio or whatever else. It's just the wire's here, so we might as well leave it in place. What you doing? Urgh. Connecting wires. Right here at the tires and the axle, huh? Yeah, I think this was for a pickup truck, not a dump truck. But it works. I'm throwing this that way. Hey, throw it that way, okay? Okay. Hey, you threw it this way. So you can see where I ran the wires from the front to the back here. I'm at the back. And then we put a plastic wire loom around it just so they are much better put together and safer down here. They won't get rubbed on anything. So here is an extra bundle of wires that have been capped off. These are for like the um, third tail light, backup lights, stuff that this truck doesn't have, but we are putting them up here in case the next person wants to use that, put that in. Woo. I'm finishing up this last brake light, tail light combination. I have the wires crimped. I'm just sliding some heat shrink over top of the connections mainly so that they don't corrode or go bad as quickly. I mean, they're not gonna last forever, but this is doing the best that I can with what things we have, especially because back here at the back of the truck, it's gonna get really dirty, wet, and kind of gnarly. So I'm gonna heat shake these real quick, and we're just about done. 
We just finished running through all the tests with the running lights, tail lights, brake lights, turn signals, all that stuff. Everything is good. So now Angel's got more of this wire loom. She's going to use it to wrap everything up and make it look good so we can check off this whole area of the truck. With everything taken care of at the back of the truck, we're now back inside here. I'm gonna go ahead and start zip tying and taping and cleaning up every bit of these wire bundles. Try and get them in logical bundles, neatly tucked in here at the dash and start to put the interior back together. Here is the last look at all the wiring back there behind the dash, all the new wires, little tiny bits of old wires through here, gauge cluster. And that's it. We can say goodbye to that because now it's time to put the cover back on and really start to button this thing down. I have the instrument cluster cover to do and then the steering wheel and a little bit of cleanup over there and then we take it for a test drive I ran it over. <laughs> I didn't really run it over, I just hit it. Unless something strange happens, that is the end of the beef and dump truck with our property. I've already got this thing listed online for sale because we need to sell this truck to pay for a septic system for our new forever homestead. We figure if we can convert this dump truck into a septic system, that's a good use of funds. To answer the question that a couple of people have asked, you know, why don't you use it before you sell it? The tag and insurance alone for this truck is $1,000. And that would be a huge chunk to get us towards having our septic system installed. In addition to that, it's an old truck. So even if I used it to build our driveway, which is a lot of loads of gravel, when I factor in the mileage, the tag, the insurance, the personal time spent, and the liability of hauling loads in this truck, it just doesn't add up numbers wise for me. So that's why we're deciding to go ahead and sell it as it is done, ready to rock and roll, use that money, and then get a septic installed. A special thank you again to Painless Performance for hooking us up with a wiring kit. If you are ever in the boat of doing a similar project, I would highly, highly recommend them. Their kits are amazing, and in our experience, phenomenal. Worth every penny you would ever spend for it. If you guys have any questions of this video or anything otherwise, leave them for us down below. Otherwise, take care, and we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead.